So far, we have unlocked the number 7 and 13 from the Chariot Tarot card. We will again look to the Fibonacci sequence to see what other numbers can be decoded from the Tarot and the Ancient Egyptian number key. If we add all the previous numbers in the Fibonacci sequence to this point in the sequence at 13, it gives us the number 33. 33 is a master number, and as such, it stands alone symbolically. But there are also other layers to the symbolism within this number, and we can deduce it to a number 6. However, let's first look at the number 33 and what this number is telling us symbolically. The number 33 is symbolic of the twin souls, as each soul is a trinity and represented by a three. For each has a part of their twin soul within, as well as the divine. So even though every soul is part of this trinity, every soul is also a trinity. Like the number 13, the number 33 is situated at the third eye crown chakra on the ancient Egyptian number key. And as discussed before, this is symbolic for the gateway between the consciousness of the ethereal soul and divine consciousness. This is where we consciously access the ethereal plane outside of our physical container, but also where we reunite as the Divine Trinity when the light of Orion, our Creator, returns at the end of every cycle. However, as we have seen in the previous videos, it is through the illumination of the heart where this access through this gateway to the Divine is granted. When we look at the symbolism of the Freemasons, we also see a connection to this information and the number 33. On one of the most important symbols of the Freemasons, depicting the highest degree you can reach within this secret organisation, we see a double-headed eagle symbolising the male and female twin souls rising to meet God consciousness and then being crowned with the 33 shown above at the third eye crown chakra. The double-headed eagle is also sometimes represented as the double-headed phoenix. And in this drawing by Jesuit priest Athanasius Kircher, he clearly shows the double-headed eagle is representing the male and female divine twin souls. The double-headed eagle is symbolic for their illumination and rising up like the phoenix from their physical form upon the light of Orion returning. The number 33 appears many times in scripture and is connected to Jesus and his crucifixion, which happened at the age of 33. This crucifixion of Jesus spoken of in scripture is symbolic of the death of the physical container when the divine male twin soul reunites with God consciousness at the end of the cycle of the soul. For just as we experience a cycle of death and resurrection on the material plane in our physical bodies, there is also a cycle of death and resurrection of our ethereal body in a larger cycle on the ethereal plane. And just as Jesus was crucified and resurrected, many people don't know that Mary also died and was resurrected three days later. This is known by the church as the Assumption of Mary. And when we look at the death and resurrection story of Mary, we see there is also a connection to the number 33. In Uruguay, there is a very holy and sacred Baroque carving of Mary, and it is called the Virgin of the 33. The Virgin of the 33 is a 36 centimetre high statue of the Assumption of the Virgin. The Assumption of Mary, like the crucifixion of Jesus, is symbolic for the death of the physical container of the divine female twin soul upon being reunited with God consciousness. So we have a direct connection to death, resurrection and the number 33, shown to be repeatedly related to both the divine male and female twin souls, Jesus and Mary Magdalene. We also see this related in verse Exodus 33, 3. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. The land flowing with milk and honey is the pure land mentioned previously in the Tibetan Buddhism. Once again, this is relating to reuniting with God consciousness and being bestowed 
with the height of consciousness at the beginning of a cycle, when we are fully illuminated, hence flowing with milk and honey. Those who did not express themselves truthfully, however, as in stiff-necked, will not go up through the heart, through the third eye chakra, to the land flowing with milk and honey. Everything in this universe exists within cycles. We see this in the Hermetic Principle of Rhythm. This principle is even applied to the conscious manifestation of God's will onto creation, which also happens in cycles. At times within the cycle of God's conscious projection onto our reality, God mentally plays out the experience of himself in full glory, as he gets to cast his light upon this realm once again and illuminate his children. And this is where mythology and scripture are created. For if we look again at the hermetic principle of correspondence, the law is as above, so below, as below, so above. However, what comes first is as above, so below. So this is showing that as above is symbolic for the divine influence that is reflected towards us and we are then a reflection of this divine influence back onto itself and each other as we all have a part of the divine within us. Now if we mirror the 33 symbolically we get the number 8 and as we saw in the previous video 8 is related to the heart and immortality and if we add the other number of the heart, 20, from the ancient Egyptian number key, to the number 33, we get 53. 5 and 3 are 8. So now we also have another connection to the heart and third eye pineal gland. If we look at the other encoded layers of information within the number 33, we see the number 6 is also present in this number. For when we add 3 and 3 together, we have 6. Six is relating to the transmutation of the mental universe and consciousness into matter and creation onto the material plane. As we have seen in the previous videos, number six, the lover's card, is symbolic for the creation of the twin souls from God consciousness and the manifestation of their ethereal forms into their physical containers onto the material plane. In relation to the number six, the Zohar states, His two eyes were manifested radiating with splendor, darting two beams of light which crossed with those of the reflection. The brow of God and his eyes formed a triangle in heaven, and its reflection formed a second triangle in the waters. So was revealed the number six being that of universal creation. So we see in the Zohar that the number six symbolizes universal creation. Matter manifests from the mental universe which is reflected below onto the waters which is symbolic for ether and why we see the symbol of Aquarius pouring forth the water. The water is symbolic of the ether and hence the age of Aquarius is also known as the age of ether. It is upon the ether that the conscious thought of God is manifest into the material and at certain times in the cycle this ether returns and the divine light illuminates once again. We also see water depicted on the chariot card symbolic for the waters of the ether. Number six is also represented in the hexagram which is connected to the heart chakra. The hexagram at the heart chakra shows that the heart has both the upper and lower forces within this energy point and these merging forces manifest the material creation into material form onto the physical plane. As we have previously discussed, the number six lover's card is symbolic of the twin soul's physical form on the material plane. And now we have the number seven chariot card which is symbolic for the ethereal form of the twin souls. At the bottom of the card, the two sphinxes represent the ethereal forms of the twin souls. The male is on the left and the female is on the right. We see that they are mirrored in position to the previous lover's card, again showing a connection between the physical and ethereal forms of each soul. The 16 white stripes on the headdress is also a symbolic connection to the ethereal form of the twin souls, as 1 and 6 equals 7. However, the black and white stripes are also symbolic for a part of each twin soul within the other, 
and we also see this related in another black and white symbol that represents the twin souls, and that is the yin yang. We see in yin yang there is a part of each within the other, and the two parts make up the whole, and even more confirmation of this connection to the yin yang symbol and the soul can be also found in these unusual ancient Japanese formations called kufan. Within these kofan, they discovered unusual carved jadeite artifacts known as magatama. Establishment archaeologists are unsure of what they represent. However, if we look to the word tama, its original meaning in Japanese was soul, as in tamashi. The Japanese word for soul or spirit in between the two sphinxes representing the male and female twin souls there is a shield with a golden orb and wings situated on the top. This shield is symbolic for our ethereal heart and the winged disc is symbolic for the third eye pineal gland. And we see the winged disc represented across culture depicting the ethereal and conscious connection to the divine at this point within our ethereal and physical body. Both the ethereal heart and third eye chakra points within our ethereal body are our connections to God consciousness and the upper ethereal planes of Ain Sof. And as we saw in the last video, this is what the hexagram on the heart chakra is symbolizing. The merging of upper and lower forces to create a vortex. The shield and heart are also mentioned in scripture in verse Psalm 28.7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. With my song will I praise him. Two and eight equates to ten, symbolic of the covenant and infinite cycle of the souls. And the number seven, as we know, equates to the ethereal form. However, we also see this vortex symbolism repeated again on the front of the shield, depicted as a spinning top. And this is also symbolic of the vortex located not only at the heart chakra, but also at the third eye, symbolized by the winged disc located on top of the shield. This symbolic spinning top is also featured in Judaism and is called a dreidel. In the next video, we will look into the symbolism of the dreidel and its connection to our heart, consciousness and Orion.